Some people call this the bionic eye, an artificial retina that may eventually help the estimated 6 million Americans and 25 million people worldwide who have become blind or who have severe visual impairments from diseases that destroy the photoreceptors in the eye, such as age-related macular degeneration and retinitis pigmentosa. In collaboration with four other national laboratories, four universities, and one industrial partner, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory has developed the first long-term retinal prosthesis that can function for years inside the harsh biological environment of the eye. This is what it's all about, a thin metallic electrode array that will ultimately be implanted on the surface of the patient's retina. Here at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, we play a key role in the Department of Energy's artificial retina program. In conjunction with our other DOE team members, we design and build a complete implantable artificial retina system. That includes a thin film electrode array that interfaces with the delicate neural tissue. That thin film electrode array is fabricated much in the same way that the computer chips are fabricated in your home computer. We fabricate all those components here at the Center for Micro and Nanotechnology at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. I'd like you to show you a few of the processes we use to fabricate those chips. So let's go inside and take a look. The process starts in a clean room after we've coated a silicon wafer with an extremely thin layer of plastic-like substance. We then insert it into this machine, which deposits a thin layer of platinum, which can then be patterned to form the electrical wiring and neural electrodes. Timing is key here. If the machine works too quickly, the plastic will burn. If it takes too long, the process bogs down. We can actually process 25 wafers at a time, which means we can reduce the overall cost of the device. It is crucial that the platinum is coated evenly on the wafer, creating a mirror-like finish. Some of that shiny platinum will be removed later to form the electrical pathways for the artificial retina. But first, we need to spray a photosensitive material onto the wafer in another section of our clean room. It is important that we don't expose the photosensitive material too early so this section of the clean room is lit with special orange lighting. So in order to make the artificial retinal device, we actually need to deposit a pattern or photo define the pattern of, of the device onto a polymer. We do that with this station here. So we actually place the wafers with the thin film polymers in the entry cassette. It actually then takes the wafers over, deposits a chemical that allows us to spin on this photosensitive polymer it then comes into this, this uh, station here where the wafers actually come down onto a cassette. It lowers it into a, a vacuum system that deposits the thin film material in the center of the wafer. The wafer then spins to uniformly coat this material to a thickness of one micron, which is roughly one hundredth of the thickness of a human hair. After that procedure is complete, which usually takes about a minute, the wafers come back up and go over to a hot plate where we bake the, the solvents out of this material. And then the material then, or the wafer then, continues on over to the exit station. And that, that process is repeated for each wafer. So every single wafer that we want to deposit a pattern onto goes through this complete system. So once we have the thin film material onto our wafers, in order to actually transfer the pattern, to that thin film, we need to expose it with ultraviolet radiation. And in order to expose it, we actually need to mask that light through some kind of photoreflective film. In this case, it's a chrome mask. And so we actually place the wafers into our lithography system, load the wafer and the mask into the chamber. If we have previous features that we've defined on the wafers, we actually align the new mask to those features using an optical microscope. And once the alignment is complete, we can then expose the whole wafer at one shot with a UV source, an ultraviolet radiation source that's in this system. And once that's complete, we actually have transferred the pattern onto the thin film on the wafer. The next step is similar to how photographic film used to be developed in a dark room. It takes only a few minutes for a chemical solution to develop the photosensitive material on the wafer you can see how the little squares are showing up. The wafer is then washed to remove the chemical solution. The wafer's photosensitive material now has the desired pattern imprinted on it, which will soon be transferred to the platinum. In order to accomplish this, we need to remove the excess platinum first, 
so that all that's left on the wafer is a desired network of platinum wires, each only about 1 50th the width of a human hair. It's a delicate process, and we constantly need to check the wafer under a microscope. Once we leave the dark room section of the clean room, it's easy to see the transformation that's taken place on the surface of the wafer. Each of the dozen arrays is visually inspected under a computerized microscope at a magnification of up to 1,500 times. Any defect, no matter how small, means that that array must be rejected. Luckily, about 90% of the arrays pass inspection here. Then there's another inspection in the next room. This one is electronic. The tip on the end of the computer-controlled arm physically checks the integrity of the circuitry on the array to make sure that the thin platinum wiring is intact. It takes about an hour to check the 12 arrays on each wafer. The array, by itself, is just one part of the assembly that will eventually be implanted into the patient. There also needs to be a package of miniaturized electronics, only about the size of a hearing aid battery. The device's two sets of integrated circuits are now connected to one another in this machine, which functions much like a sewing machine. It meticulously attaches a thin gold wire from one set of electronics to the other. It takes the machine only about five minutes to complete just over 100 separate connections, using a wire that's only about one quarter the thickness of a human hair. Next, the completed electronics package is assembled onto a thin film array. This machine uses sensitive cameras to align both components. They are carefully brought together and bonded using a unique glue. Using pressure and heat, the curing process takes about five minutes. At this point, the implantable device is complete. What you see here is an incredible engineering success. Previous attempts to provide artificial retinas relied on handcrafted electrode arrays and were limited to just 16 pixels. We've moved far beyond that now with our current technology, and we are now working on increasing the number of pixels to more than 1,000. We are incredibly proud of what we've accomplished, knowing that this thin film has already restored at least partial sight to dozens of patients at multiple medical facilities around the world.